Today's video is the first in a three-part HS2 mini-series that I'm calling HS2 What, Where and Why, in which I'll hopefully explain all you need to know about the project. In this first episode, we'll be taking a look at what HS2 actually is, and I'll be giving you an overview of the project as a whole. I'll be sticking to the sections of HS2 that are either under construction, or for which plans have progressed, or are currently progressing through Parliament, and as such are likely to go ahead. So, what is HS2? Put simply, as it stands, it is a new mainline railway roughly 215 miles long that is being constructed from London to Birmingham and Manchester via crew with connections to the West Coast Main Line to allow trains to run further north to places such as Liverpool, Warrington, Preston and further north to Glasgow. Phase 1, which is currently under construction, comprises of a main line from London Euston to the West Midlands, with a junction constructed to the east of Birmingham to allow trains to leave the main line and head west to a new city centre station called Birmingham Curzon Street. The main line, or core section, will head north from said junction to just north of Lichfield. From there, HS2 will split, with the main line heading north to connect with what will eventually be Phase 2A, whilst the junction will take a spur heading northwest to connect with the West Coast main line between Rugeley and Lichfield. This connection could initially allow HS2 trains to reach Manchester, Liverpool and Glasgow, although once Phase 2A opens, the junction will be used for a proposed service originating in Macclesfield that will call Stoke-on-Trent and Stafford, and then will join HS2 for the journey to Euston. The construction of Phase 1 will also include the building of four new stations, which includes Euston. Although Euston Station will share the same name as the current West Coast Mainline Terminus, the station itself will be housed in a completely new structure that will be fully integrated with the existing station, in addition to being integrated with Euston Underground Station and Euston Square. In Birmingham, a new landmark station will be constructed on the site of what was Curzon Street Station which closed in 1966. I've already made videos detailing both of these stations and there will be a link in the description to a HS2 playlist which includes both of those videos. Two additional stations will be constructed between London Euston and Birmingham Curzon Street. The first will be Old Oak Common, which is being constructed in West London. This new super hub will provide connections between HS2, the Elizabeth Line and Great Western Main Line. The interchange will allow passengers to reach Heathrow, Reading, key central London stations, Canary Wharf and East London. The other station, located to the southeast of Birmingham, will be called Birmingham Interchange. This station will be fully integrated with Birmingham International Railway Station and Birmingham Airport, with the connection between all three provided via a rapid people mover. I'm hoping to record separate videos about these two stations over the next month or so, so keep an eye out for those. The current budget for the first 140 mile long phase, including the four new stations, is currently 35 to 45 billion, which includes a contingency of 9.6 billion. Construction of phase one started in 2020, with the construction expected to be completed between 2029 and 2033. HS2 Phase 2A will continue the line north from the spur located just to the east of Rugeley and will head north towards Crewe. And although the plans for Phase 2A progress through Parliament separately to those for Phase 1, the two phases will be treated as one, with preliminary works on Phase 2A expected to begin next year. So the aforementioned spur located to the east of Rugeley will in reality just be a continuation of HS2 as it heads north to Crewe. Phase 2A will be 36 miles in length and will include a connection to the West Coast Main Line just south of Crewe Station. Plans for Phase 2A also includes the approach to the tunnels that will eventually take Phase 2B underneath Crewe, with the line then extending north to Manchester. The connection to the West Coast Main Line just south of Crewe will allow HS2 services to leave the new railway and travel north to Liverpool and Glasgow, with calls at key West Coast Main Line stations along the way. This junction will also be used for Manchester-bound services prior to the opening of Phase 2B. The budget for Phase 2A is around £5.2 to £7.2 billion, with this phase expected to be completed by 2033. Phase 2B will begin from just to the south of Crewe and will continue in a tunnel underneath Crewe, emerging just to the north of the town and east of the West Coast Main Line. The current hybrid bill for Phase 2B also includes a connection to the West Coast Main Line that could be used for Liverpool services if Northern Powers Rail is constructed. This connection would allow trains from Manchester to call at Crewe, although HS2 services from Manchester to Euston will travel underneath Crewe once Phase 2B is open. It would however be possible for HS2 services between Manchester and Birmingham to call at Manchester Airport, leave HS2 just north of Crewe, call at Crewe Station and then get back onto HS2 at the junction located to the south of the town. The plans for Phase 2B, which are currently progressing through Parliament, will also include passive provision for future connections to Northern Powerhouse Rail. Passive provision in this instance will take the form of some earthwork that would make adding junctions later on more straightforward. 
One of those junctions would allow trains from Liverpool to use a proposed NPR line via Warrington to travel south to London, whilst another junction would allow trains to travel on NPR and HS2 between Liverpool and Manchester. The plans for Phase 2B include a new station to be constructed at Manchester Airport, although the government is seeking additional funding for the station that could come from the owners of the airport. Phase 2B will terminate at a new station to be built just to the north of and integrated with the existing Manchester Piccadilly station. The approach into the station will also include further passive provision for NPR. This would allow trains from Liverpool to reverse at the new station and then head eastwards to Leeds via the proposed Northern Powerhouse Rail Line that will connect to the existing Transpennine route 10 miles to the west of Huddersfield. There's still a lot of discussion going on with many people arguing that the new station at Piccadilly should be an underground station and that would eliminate the need for NPR trains from Liverpool to Leeds to reverse at Piccadilly. However, the bill as proposed is for a new terminus station. HS2 Phase 2B will be 38 miles in length and the current budget is 15 to 22 billion pounds. However, this could change as detailed design works are carried out. The extension to Manchester is due to open between 2035 and 2041. However, HS2 trains from Manchester will begin to operate from the existing station between 2029 and 2033. As well as the new sections of railway and new stations, the plans for HS2 also includes alterations to Carlisle and Preston to allow 400 metre long trains to call at those stations. However, this would only be required if a northern connection to the West Coast mainline, similar to the proposed Goldbourne link, is constructed, as the length and platforms will be used for Glasgow and Edinburgh services to combine. However, without the link, or some form of eastern arm, it is unlikely that Edinburgh services would use HS2 at all. As the section between Birmingham, the East Midlands and Leeds is still under review, I'm not going to go into that in this video, nor the Goldbourne link that would have seen a connection to the West Coast Main Line constructed just to the south of Wigan, which has been removed from the bill for Phase 2B. I may however return to this section in a future video. I'll be going into more detail about the route and where HS2 will eventually serve in the next video, with the final video in the series examining why it is we need to build the line in the first place. So that's HS2 as it stands, if you've got any questions about the project let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can, however I won't be responding to negative copy and paste messages from those who oppose the project. Anyway I hope you found this video informative, if you have please do hit that like button and consider subscribing, but I'm going to leave it there for today, say so until next time, bye bye.